Are we live? Almost, yes, we are live. <laughs> All right, good morning, guys and gals. Welcome to another episode of Rotafest Detail Memoirs, where we explore the movers, the shakers, and I'm telling you, we got a shaker today. That's right. Jamie Gonzalez from JNG Auto Recon's our guest, and of course, I'm Rod Pusey, and uh, this is Jody Cedric, and. So, uh, RotoFest Detail Memoir is always sponsored by RotoFest. Thank you guys for subscribing, going to our YouTube channel. It's awesome. That's what keeps us going on this. And I'm really excited about talking with Jamie because Jamie's one of my favorite people. He absolutely is, too. Oh, yeah. man. Hey, it's the same with you me. You're flirting with yeah, me. <laughs> no, man, I love it. I love seeing the videos. Like, I think the first time I saw a video from you, Jamie, is you were doing, and you're going to remember this car, but you were doing, uh, you were sweat sanding a single stage Porsche. And, and, and man, just I was just watching the, the sanding marks, and you could just tell in the sanding marks how precise you were doing that. And it was, it was actually really kind of mesmerizing watching you wet sand this, <laughs> this roof of this single stage. And so anyway, that was, that was like one of the first times I remember seeing you yeah. on video. So that's a, that's a scary thing. Single stage could be scary. <laughs> yeah. yeah, tell me about it. Come so. on. You, yeah. you, you don't want to press a little too hard? No, no. <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah, if you want, if you know a good painter, if you, <laughs> that's good, man. <laughs> so, Jamie, yeah. man, we we've known each other for a number of years now, and I, I tell you, it's been fun. We actually met in person multiple places at SEMA, at a training mm -hmm. down in Salt Lake, and you've just been consistently growing your business. And so, how did you get started, man? Um, so I got started. Um, I was a prepper for uh, a body shop, um, mobile guys. We were doing just spot blending, bumper repair, just small like front bumper hood and just prepping. That's pretty much how I got started. Well, actually, before that, actually, let me go a little bit before that. I was a lot tech at a dealership. So I was at a Honda dealership. It's probably, I think it was like in 2002, <clears throat> around there. Okay. And then... One of the managers went to some other store. I was a detailer for a little bit. And then I met a painter that needed a prepper. And I was like, all right, let's go ahead and start doing that. So that's how I got into like actual, you know, polishing and uh, just paint stuff. Yeah. Cause you do so, a lot more, you do a lot more um, repair work and, and paint, repair than yeah. a lot of yeah. people. I mean, some of the stuff you've done, some of the stuff I've seen where, uh, most dealerships, the stuff that you've done, they would send that to conventional body work, right? They would send yeah, that yeah, off. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So they would have like, um, like a lot of the little spots we repair most of the time. Yeah. They would go to an actual body shop, which we work with a lot of body shops because sometimes they don't want to, they don't want these small jobs taking up space in their shop or yeah. in their paint. They want the 5,000, you know, 3,000, 5,000, the bigger jobs so a lot of the times um our contracts or different shops we deal with they'll send those smaller jobs to us corner blends small door maybe little fender type stuff you know stuff that we could just bang out you know and even on color matching and stuff like that so that that's kind of what we do primarily wholesale we do about you know 20 percent of our business is actual um retail so I, I try to get the good retail, you yeah, know. Yeah. But so how how did you make that decision to finally branch out and create your own business? Um. So, I had a guy I was working with, and it was just we we kind of clashed a little bit because we wanted. He was a small. He only had one guy. It was me, and then we hired another guy. I was like, man, this is working. Things are easier, but he just didn't want to grow. And he was amazing. This dude just, I learned so much from him, but he just only, he was one of those guys that work like a 10 to three type guy. And mm -hmm. me, I was like, dude, I'm not doing anything at night. <laughs> so like, I want to go. So eventually I just was like, Hey, you don't want to go big. You don't want to grow. You don't want to do that. So I said, all right, well, it's time for me to go. And then 2008 happened. Actually, that was one of the main things. So 2008, when that happened, dealerships dried up, everything dried up. So that was another push. Like, hey, let's go hustle. Let's go talk to people. Let's try to, you know, 
just yep. get more accounts, the retail route. And some people just folded under that. And then me, I was like, dude, we got to go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, and I mean, honestly, that's I, seriously, you're one of my favorite people because because of the diversity of what you do and you're always hustling. And plus, you have like cool socks. So, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the thing about it is, is there's a lot of people that are. I don't want to say afraid because most most detailers are not afraid. It's just they don't know how to navigate in the retail and the dealership world. The dealership world is scary and not a lot of people know how to navigate that. But but I see you doing that. And and the other thing I see is we were we were talking about that single stage paint job. Knowing your background, that's not as scary to you because you know if you burn through, you got this guy that's doing the sanding that knows how to touch it up and fix it. So I yep. think that's what scares a lot of people about working in the detailing industry is I think because they're single focused. They only do this one thing and that's the only thing they do where I see you really jumping in and out of different things. And one day you're touching up a bumper and the next day you're polishing something. And the next day it's like this cool, you know, classic Porsche you're working on. So that's actually, I think really smart from a business perspective is, you know, we all know you can't just have all your eggs in one basket. I mean, it's just, you have to branch out. Yeah. Well, dealerships suck dealing with, so it's completely different customers. So like dealership, it's, it is on customer service. Like a lot of people yeah. say, well, they don't care. They don't care. No, you got to bail these guys out, out mm. all the time. So mm -hmm. concentrate on what I tell my guys. And I was talking to Terry, I was like, dude, that's just, in and out, like if we can make that customer, that managers or the GM or whoever you're dealing with, avoid a bad CSI, um, customers, you know, customer service. If we could figure out how to yeah. just handle that niche market, then you could, it's actually a lot easy, and easier in a sense because they bring a car, it has a scratch or it has a dent, you fix that in a timely manner. Yeah, they want it done now, but a lot of the times it's not that big of a deal, but it's hard. You got to service them. But guess what? We're going to get 50 cars from this one GM or this manager, or this guy and dealer. It, it's, <clears throat> it's just a numbers game. If you want to scale and you can do it retail wise, but you're always just trying to raise that price. You're like, Oh, I'm going to, I like, you want to do the $4,000 ceramic coating or two, whatever you're doing versus on lots, you're taking care of these cars and my price, like the hourly rate that we need to get to, we need so much work. So we put that in our contract yep. and we get the dealer to say, look, if we're going to be here at the dealership, this is the X amount of money that we need to be at to be here, you know? Yep. So we're getting a couple of uh, comments coming in. I want you to address them because uh, Mike, you're trying to diversify yourself by adding paint chip or tip repair. Jamie, what advice would you give him? So the, the main thing with paint chip repair, um, if you're doing – like we'll do an interior detail for instance so like we don't really do it but if a customer calls in we're going to do that interior and i just use that to get the customers in for my upsells yep. for a bumper repair for pdr for paint touch up headlight restoration you know whatever you're trying to do yep. to get that so like we're not we don't really do a ton of interiors but interior we take to get the next but anyways on the touch up thing if you want to take it on um Gosh, it's such a hard thing. It's the color matching thing. It's like you need to find a good color matching system, like Dr. Color Chip or something like that. We use body shops, pretty much the same car, the same paint it's painted with. So right. we can get a paint code, we match it. So our system's a little bit different, which, you know, you could do that. But I would start off at going to like a Dr. Color Chip or they have like, there's a lot of different, you know, or you can go to the dealership and buy the stuff and right. learn your pen game, you know, learn how to touch it up yourself. Right. You know, and that's what we always tell people is go to a junkyard, get some crappy yeah. piece of junk from a junkyard and teach yourself. Uh, hey, I got a Suburban that needs some touch up. You guys can practice <laughs> on mine all day, baby. Bring it down. Yeah. And he's actually <laughs> with Dr. Culture. So, so, you know, I think upselling is a great way to do stuff. I've actually been there and I've actually helped one of our one of the Road FS customers. I was at a dealership with them. Believe it or not, we actually go to dealerships and work with our some of our some of our clients. And we were there and helped get him the contract at a dealership for headlight restoration. Um, 
you know, and there's a lot of controversy around headlight restoration, but somebody comes in with, with headlights that are all faded out and the, the GM literally walked in the back and goes to, to our guy, dude, I just told this gal that you do her headlights. Do you guys even do that? And he looked at me and I'm like, yeah, we can do that right now. And, and I'm like, I'm here selling. Hey, that's the kind of stuff for dealers. That's going to, that's good. You need to be a, a part of that team of them. Yeah. You need to start looking at them as, all right, you want to help them sell that car. So you want to, when, if a manager or a customer comes in, you want to, you don't want to be like, Hey, we got to paint correct this. This needs whatever, 10 yeah. states, blah, 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 yeah, yeah. all this stuff. You don't want to come at them like that. But the cool thing about a dealership is once they start referring you work, <clears throat> you have that. And then all of a sudden you're going to get that paint correction. You're going to get the ceramic coated. We're going to get right. those <clears throat> nice bumper paints or paint, paintless dent removal. So we'll get all that. Yeah. So, the dealer, you need to look at that as that's part of your marketing tool. Well, yeah, and if that dealer, you're hooking them up. I'm dropping knowledge right now on these guys. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, you are. You know, you go, man. So, but what I'm oh, saying, baby, go. Is, no, I'm, I'm just saying because I've been doing this so so long. Is people just look at you? Got to look at your leverage as a as a talented detailer or a talent, whatever your talent is. Headlight restoration. You don't do that. You need to learn. Yep. Yeah. If you, yep. if you see someone in any of these shops you need to learn how to do that how to figure it out test it hood whatever whatever you're gonna do you got to learn that because that's money walking away from you yeah and even that it's like you could bail in that person out or like uh, i have customers that every time they're going to sell a car they're selling their car they bring it for a reconditioning yep. because they know the, they're going to make that money it's going to sell a lot faster customer people aren't going to pick part their vehicle so they can bring it down so yeah and that's the right, thing is so is gotta... <clears throat> probably maybe i'm gonna say six eight years ago you know everybody was a specialist i was either a paint touch-up guy you know jody's just a detailer jamie works just on ceramic coating and that's not how it is anymore people want to go to a one-stop shop they don't want to go to yeah, they do. people to do recon on their car they want to go to one person unless you're somebody like you know uh uh really really well known and there are people that are specialists in certain areas that that can do that but for the normal well i'll call the, the person off the street if you just got a shop and you're doing stuff you don't want to turn down that work you know it's it it, it it's what pays the bills it's what keeps the lights on yeah. and you can learn what you want to do as as your skill as your craft and put that on on youtube and do all that stuff and man i specialize in three stage on on lamborghinis and that's my thing and i got a lamborghini logo on my shirt well that's fine yeah. but i'll tell you what mom comes in with a minivan you do it because that keeps the lights on well and the thing yeah. that that you said that re there's two things that you really said that really impacted me number one you said i often bail out the dealer right and i think a lot of people view the pressure of doing dealership work as pressure instead of an opportunity to be part of their team to sell that car mm -hmm. And so I love that, that, that verbiage of saying, you know what, I'm here to bail them out. I'm becoming part of their team. And in that process of being part of the, the dealership team, <clears throat> you're bringing in more business because they know that they can trust you with not only great work, but a diversity of work. And you know what, I can trust Jamie yeah. to get this job done. Yeah. yeah and, and I'm not saying you don't want to be that person like the jack of all trades. Like, you know, right. like everyone says, look at it. These guys do this. They do that. Like I have a specific dent guy. I have a guy that just paints bumpers. You know, yep. like you don't want to. There's guys that are out there that are really good at polishing interior. You know, there's guys that are really good at that. If you don't want to hire that out, you need to expand that team and and create these partnerships within these different within your shop. So you yep. have all these different guys. Like if you go to a lot of these, <laughs> um, what would I say? Like a uh, restoration shops. Most of these restoration shops. They have a uh, contracted interior worker, fab, all that, and the paint shop. Oh, yeah. So they're, they're multiple companies, 1099 companies, but they work under that umbrella of that actual business. Oh, yeah, so absolutely. If, you've, yeah, you, so you, you, you got to know the what The best you, guys are like that. Yeah, you got to know what you can't do as well, right? I mean, I yeah. do a lot of work on my own cars. I post, you know, my classic trucks yeah. and stuff like that all the time. But I'll tell you one thing. The, every piece of aluminum that has been welded, it ain't this guy. Because yeah. I can weld aluminum really, really good for about five minutes. I mean, it's beautiful. And then pff, it just explodes. But I know a yeah. guy that my ex-son-in-law is an artist. And every time I need anything welded aluminum, 
<clears throat> you go to him. And I know my limitations. And I can learn, and that's great. But it's so much easier to go to somebody. What kind of that, time do you got, though? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Sometimes and, it's not worth it. It's like, no, man, this guy <clears throat> has it figured out. Yep. And just pay the dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so one of the other things, and Mike, this Mike, that you're asking these questions. These are great. I should pay you for this because these questions are great. <laughs> Mike's dealing with, he's got a shop, but he's dealing with what he calls the weekend warriors, right? And, and I'm going to answer this and then let you answer it your own way too, Jamie. How you deal with the weekend warriors that are not professionals and are just picking up the you know $20 washes on the weekend, that is where you get your business. Because those guys do a crappy job and you're going to do a better job. There's going to be swirls all over the car and your business is to fix what they've screwed up. And, and do it. Don't You don't lower your price to try to get with those guys. You don't, you don't mess with trying to chase yourself to the bottom. Stick with your prices, deal with what you do, do a better job and market as the professional. If you look behind Jamie, you got three certifications. You got IDA, IDA, and you got a training from Rennie Doyle. I can picture it right on the wall. I know what that one is. Yeah, I do. honestly, I have a few that I just haven't. So this is my, where I'm at right now. It's like I have my holding plate where we hold cars. Yep. So I have over there. And I want to put them all up nice, but yeah, you market yourself as the professional and that's what you, that's what you deal with. And the weekend warriors, the guy, the guy or gal with the bucket on the corner, they're going to work themselves out of that market because they're not going to get the return customers if they're doing a crappy job. And if they're that's doing a great marketing for us, that's good for us. Like you need those guys. Everybody <clears throat> starts somewhere. Yeah. Right, so right. you can't be mad at the next guy cause he's just trying to make a living. Like for me, I get guys just other shops come or other mobile guys, shop guys will come in and they're like trying to like pick me apart, figure out how I did it. I was like, dude, this is all hustle. Yeah. Like this, like I don't have it figured out like at all. Like yeah. I'm, I'm on my way to try to figure this out, but it's a daily struggle. And if they want to step into the grind and they want to step into what we're doing, then more power to them because it ain't easy. Like yep. there's going to be days that, you don't make no money and then there's going to be days that are good you know so like the guys that are we need them yeah because they make people that <clears throat> care about their craft that want to improve that are willing to take classes pay people you know and grow they their help they they we need that to grow our industry yep and you our need to be part of the association we don't have people practicing at home yeah you need to be part of associations a lot of people ask about the ida right and and whether or not that's valuable the, the, the fact of the matter is if you're not part of a professional organization, that, that elevates you to the next level. And they help market you. There's, you know, how do I find an IDA detailer in my area? Or whether that's the PDR associations or paint associations. Be part of those professional organizations and they can help you market. Um, you know, Jody and I are, we don't have to be part of the IDA. We're vendors, right? We sell software. We don't do work, but we're, we're lifetime members. We're, we're lifetime, <laughs> oh, thanks, Jamie. Excellent software. We're lifetime <laughs> yeah. members of the IDA. We're founders club members. We sit on a committee for consumer awareness to help promote all of the people that are in the IDA <clears throat> because we want the whole industry to be elevated to that professional level. And that's really how you deal with that is <clears throat> market yourself, show off your professionalism, show off your training. Um, you know, I've been at trainings, the, the, the training we were with you in Utah there, there were some unbelievable detailers there. <clears throat> so we scout out guys. So like we have a good a good group of guys here, detailers. And I was if I see a good detailer and I know he's trying to elevate, like I will tell him and say, Hey, dude, you know about the IDA. Like I tell if if I know there's someone you can tell uh, right off the bat, you're like, Hey, this guy cares about what he's doing. I'm like, people can talk crap, but <clears throat> I've been to training, I've been places and they'll just hate on it. I'm like, how are you mad at something? that's trying to make your industry better. Right? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> right, all there's, there, there's nothing bad. Like you can get bad people in ID. You can get bad people from, anywhere. In anywhere. But for the most part, I'm not really like in it, involved in the actual IDA scene. Like I have a member or whatever I do, you know, I do all that. But I feel like the guys that I know that are willing to pay the money, willing to do the training, the guys, it's a rip off, you know, they're trying to make <laughs> our money. But it is nothing bad. Like here's the thing that, I, yeah, the thing ahead. that I look at, that you know, the people that say that, it's like you're looking at there. You keep saying they're trying to take my money instead of going. I'm investing in myself. I'm investing in my business, and I because I'm an investing kind of in 
because I'm in an investing mode, I'm going to grow. I'm going to capture market share. Yeah. I'm going to build my reputation. I'm going to build my business. And I think that's one of the things that really both Rod and I really enjoy about you is everything that you're doing is driven either by improving your skill set, sharing that knowledge, because a lot of people don't want to share that knowledge. And you are a phenomenal trainer. And you do, you're really open to going, Hey guys, you know, how do you fix this? Or what's your tips on that? You are open to sharing. And I think that builds on itself. And so how do you balance, you know, that hustle because you're all about hustle, but also managing the day to day of your business. So I'm still working every day. Like I don't have, like, I still answer phones. I'm still, I'm still doing it. And Honestly, right now, that's where my that's that's where I'm button heads. Family, figuring out hours you're putting in, you know. So it's kind of hard to say how I'm balancing because right now, honestly, that's what I'm failing at. You know what I mean? I'm failing at, you know, just just that that's that's my hustle. I'm gonna tell you right now, I am not succeeding at that right now. Yeah, and so, I think that's that right there. That's what ninety percent of the people won't do. They won't recognize their own failures and they won't verbalize that. And that, I think that's yeah. the first step to fixing that. If you know that and that's in your mind, you're going to be able to help that. You know, I know a lot of people mm -hmm. that have overcome things that they've been eating them up for years, you know, um, and mm -hmm. then they finally got over it and they think they're just thriving. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to pick on Nathan Warren cause he's on this call. He's been commenting on this. Nathan finally got over and, and did what he's wanted to do forever. He moved. And he moved to a new place, and he's loving it. I can tell by all the posts. <laughs> he's, I, managing you know, he's managing two markets now. Two it's markets like, now. And so that, you know, it's like, man, you talk about killing it, and it, 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 <laughs> it is, yeah, marriages. it's two marriages. <laughs> but, but you're doing the same thing, but you recognize that, and I think that's the first part of that is recognizing, you know, okay, where can we improve? Jody and I are constantly doing that on our software and on everything. Is where can we improve? How do we make this better? We're failing at this. We're failing it on on this part we got to fix that and we'll call the team together and we'll literally stop everything we're like stop what you were working on yesterday you're not working on it today we're failing at this yeah. part we need to go to this direction and i think that that's what helps um, anybody that's an entrepreneur that's what you have to do is you have to be able to look at your own shortcomings and then make a decision and fix it mm -hmm. you know and i oh, see yeah. that, i see that in you too i mean like if there was a new technique that came out tomorrow and it, it requires you to use the opposite hand that you uh, that you normally use. You know, you'd figure it out. You'd be like, "I'm going to figure this out," or you'd farm it out to somebody that's a that's an artist at it yeah, and yeah. just deal with it. So you got to change. Like you can't you can't <clears throat> just you have to realize this. You aren't the smartest person on the planet. What? You're not the greatest detailer on what? the planet. You're not. <laughs> and I feel like once you figure that out, like I'll watch you know, constantly. Like we with my guys once a month or a couple times a month we stay late and we just figure out hey what what made things easier just like i could watch somebody wipe a car wipe a panel down i'm like yeah, dude like we got to figure that out like there's better ways to do everything and i don't know every way i i try to figure out you know but you got to just learn if you're not learning and you're not changing things up if you're doing the same thing you did last year you ain't Things change. Everything's yeah. evolving. Everything's right, evolving. Right. It's it's. There's an example that, I, and, and I've done stuff for years. I do stupid stuff. Um, you know, when I was younger in my 20s, I would have taken the worst car on the block. I mean, my thing was bottom price, man. I want to pick a car up for 200 bucks, and then I'm going to rebuild it from the ground up. I'm going to do everything. And uh, literally, the last two months, I started selling off stuff <laughs> and buying better stuff. And my wife is like, dude, you're selling everything. I said, no, I'm selling crap that would have cost me 80 hours of work to make that look good. And I'm done. I'm selling the crap and I'm buying nicer <laughs> stuff to start with so that I don't have to spend so much time working on this stuff. Um, uh, it's That's I, called experience and seasoning. I mean, yeah. it really it does, yeah, right? Because, it does. <laughs> and it's I'm called not, my fingers are all crooked. All my fingers are all broken and crooked. I can't hold anything straight any longer. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a hard learner too. Like I'll I'll start doing something and then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make it work. I'm just gonna make it work. And then finally at the end of it, I was like, man, 
Yeah. Let's go. Let's go to Home Depot. Let's go figure it out. Let's yeah. Go. So now that's I, I. I literally um this my wife knows this and she shakes her head. But I bought a '57 Chevy pickup uh, and started restoring it. And I've restored cars for years since the '80s. Mm-hmm. But I'm not the greatest painter in the world, and I wanted to paint my car. Now, the reason I bought a '57 Chevy pickup to restore is because I have my dream car. I have a 55 two-door Bel Air Post that I have wanted since I was nice. a kid. And it's and I want still to paint under it. a tarp. And I want to paint it, but I want to paint it black. Crack. So the 57 is to practice and learn on. I have repainted my 57 pickup three times because oh. I'm not happy with the paint. And so I've sanded it down, repainted it, sanded it down, repainted it. The last time, my, my, son-in-law, uh, my son-in-law right now, is he's a painter. He paints for CarMax. And he came over and looked at my car and he's like, dude, this is single stage paint. And he's like, what have you sanded it down with? And I go, I haven't sanded it down yet. And he's like, like, yep. this is out on the lot at the dealership. This is done. <laughs> we're we're, we're yeah. done. And I'm still not happy with it. So you also got to realize. You I need to call your wife though. I need to tell your wife that you're having too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. You go, you walk in the house. You're like, oh man, this, this, no. Paint, you're you're, ruin, no, you're no, ruining no. his man no. cave, dude. No, Don't I'll tell do you what. that. I, I will tell you what. And this is normally not the, the forum for this, but I a huge shout out to my wife. My wife, I've been married to my wife for 30 years. And from day one, she knew that I had a addiction to cars. And she has left me alone with that. I have a separate bank account for my cars. Uh, we do, There's not a question about what I'm doing. Um, she has... She has given me every bit of leeway to have that addiction. So she that's yeah. that is I, totally fine. I actually knew that. So like this is weird. Like, cause I've been with my wife. We got married when I'm, I'm 37 now. I married my wife when I was 21. So I've been with my wife, you know, for quite some time. And when I met both, when I met you guys, I was like, you have to. Uh, not saying to everyone to be. You could just almost feel that from people, like the. I don't know, like, a, it's not an aura, but, like, I knew, like, you had a good support system. And yeah. same with you. Because let me tell you what, because you guys are traveling. You came, when you come out here, you guys come out here, you know, quite a bit. I know you have, you guys say you both have family out here? Yeah, I have yeah. a brother in Harriman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you got to have that support system. Yeah, and Jody and I do. We have an awesome support system. That kind of goes along with business, too. If you're going to be a business person, you're going to be an entrepreneur, you have to have that support system that understands that. And and that's... Yeah, the way it work. Right. And you're, you're it ain't gonna work. I can see you posting pictures of your family and everything, and it'll be a Sunday afternoon, you post some crazy picture of you and me doing push-ups. And, you know, it's just... That's how it goes, man. It just... You got to have that yeah. support. So let's talk about family real quick before we wrap up. So you had an awesome post... On TikTok, uh, not TikTok, uh, on Instagram, of your little kid dancing in the shop. And he's all he's all getting down, right, doing his little yeah. thing. And the, the, the funny thing was, the next clip that you did was he's out there going, you realize why I'm in the shop. I'm not just dancing. I'm making money. <laughs> yeah, he like, knows. Yeah. I tell him, I, yeah, he knows. You just got to teach him young, like, and he wants to be here. Like, it's almost a punishment if he can't come. Like, you know, he, he wants to be around and he, yeah, he's, he's going to, he'll, he'll eventually do this. I'm pretty sure he's too smart, but the problem is, is he thinks he just loves it. Yeah. yeah. So like, I'm like, I got to figure out a direction to push him to be involved with cars, but you know, not saying that. Yeah, anyways, he can do it, whatever. You know what? Yeah. Hey, hey, you know what? You you give him the skills. And here's the thing. You're not just teaching him the skills of detailing and paintwork. And you're teaching him entrepreneurship. Right. And that's yeah. really the skill. Whether he uses it in detailing or some other business, he's going to have that foundation to go, you know what? My dad gave me the skills to, to create a business. I can go do anything. And I think that's a more important skill than teaching him the craft, right? Yes, he yeah. needs to have the craft, but he needs to have the, the skills and the drive and the hustle to go make it happen, which he sees yeah. that in his dad. Yeah, absolutely. You can tell. You can tell. Just him dancing on the show. Does. You know, that's what we're all doing it for. Yep. You know, you're doing it for, for that long-term security for the family. You know what I mean? You want to build something 
you know, for them to, you know, hopefully come in and be involved or, you know, send them out and do something else. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah exactly. And they're going to do their own path. They're going to do whatever they're not, they're not, you know, that's, I don't, I never have the, the kind of the feeling that my kids are going to follow in my footsteps because they're not, they got their own path, but hopefully they pick up the work ethic and the balance and, you know, talking to them about doing stuff and the fact that they can pick up skills of any kind and go and do something with it. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. I, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to <clears throat> raise, just raise some great kids. You guys already have, you got kids, you know, just, that's all, that's all. If I can make my kids just be contribute to society. Great. Then I succeeded. That that's pretty yep. much my goal. <laughs> that's awesome, man. That is exactly it. So how do people get hold of you, man? I mean, we. So I my mean, name you are is Jane Gonzalez. I'm out of here, Salt Lake City. Um, J and G Recon on um, Instagram. J or the real paint guy. I think. No real life detailer on YouTube. I only have a few videos up there, but still go and watch him critique me. Tell me I'm doing crap. <laughs> no, you're doing great. <laughs> yeah, and then I also have. Uh, I just started TikTok. Facebook, J&G Auto Reconditioning, yep, all that. That's it, man. And and you are slaying it on yeah, the social no, media. I mean, me. I love what you share because it's not just yeah. looking. Let me look tell you one thing about social media because I do a lot of mi mini. Um, we can go to this is like a whole new subject. <laughs> and I do like these, a lot of these mini videos, and sometimes they're controversial. But there's a reason why I do that. So I do that because that helps. People will go on there and then they'll start clicking on stuff and then people will click on your website. Mm -hmm. So what that yeah. does is that helps my, that helps the search engine for my Google. That's so I don't correct. really do, I don't do a ton of, uh, you know, AdWords. I don't really, I do AdWords, but I don't do a lot of paid advertising. It's pretty much, I just get moved up just because, you know, straight on that. Yeah. Well, and your, your videos, I mean, <clears throat> honestly, your, your videos are different because a lot of people, I'm going to show just a basic 50, 50, right? Here's the line. Dull, scratched, shiny, ooh, you know, and that's fine. Everybody does that. You need to do that. It shows consumers what you can do, and I'm totally all for that. But yours are different, man. I mean, yeah. if you had a TikTok video of you doing that hood, the roof on that green Porsche, that single stage Porsche. I'm not kidding, guys. If you go out and look at Jamie's stuff, there's this thing of him wet sanding, and it's it's like a machine cuts this roof the 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 scrap the the sanding marks are precise all the way across you can tell that your hands are just moving in exactly the same pattern and it's awesome i mean it, it it's absolutely awesome the way you do it and you turn that into a tiktok video it just piques people's interest. it's like nice and satisfying to watch it, yeah, it is right it's, it's like, exactly. hashtag satisfying baby it's, what yeah, is it? hashtag detail like <laughs> asmr where people are just listening to sounds or watching videos that's that's satisfying to watch that and and I think people need to think about it in different ways of how can you stir up interest, right? We do it all the time with our stuff. It's like, how do two software guys stir up interest in the detailing industry? Well, like we were telling you earlier, we have over 75 videos out on our stuff. Some of them are us working. Some of the two biggest ones, I got a picture of Jody with his hat on backwards at the training in Utah, polishing the side of that uh, Durango that we did before we did this. Yeah, I know. When I seen you guys, I was like, because I, I was using your software before I met you, before yep. we actually met. And then when I met, when I met you guys, you know, I was like, what are you guys doing? She's like, we're going to work. I was yeah. like, what? Let's, <laughs> so that, that was a big part. I was like, dude, these guys actually know and they, they care. You know what I mean? And, and that, that was actually really cool. I was like, man, yeah, these well, guys, we, these guys really care about what they're doing. Well, you, we have you know, you, we have fun working side by side with you guys. I mean, it, it just really is fun to pick up a polisher and and I mean, Rod's a lot better than I am, but you know, I just have fun walking with you guys and learning and and hearing your stories. And really, that's what yeah. this is about. We're you know trying to highlight your story, and uh, we appreciate you taking the time to visit with us. I know we could keep going. In fact, we Maybe probably we'll can two part we'll do two. A part yeah, we got to do it again. Yeah, yeah we got to part do it again. two. So um, we need to do a part two with Nathan too. Because, yeah, we need to get Nathan Warren. And Mike, if you want to be on the show, give us a call. Yeah, you know, we'll get Mike. Look us on up, well. Mike. We'll get you on here. We'll tell your story too. Yeah. If you guys have not went and looked at Jamie's stuff, J and G Auto Recon in Salt Lake City, please go out and do it. It's awesome. He is killing it in Utah. There's a lot of really good detailers.
bars in Salt Lake. I will say I've met a lot of really good people. Oh, there there. is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there it is. You guys work together. You talk to each other. I don't see a lot of fighting back and forth, Mm -mm. you know. And so go out and take a look at what they're doing out there. Yeah, um, I mean, they're doing yeah. good stuff, so check it out. Yeah, we got some talented people out here yeah. that care. You yeah, Salazar, I mean? on-site detail. I mean, there's a bunch yeah. of them. They're great. Yeah, we got freaking Detail Envy. We got Detail a ton of guys. Yeah. So, well, but, thank- yeah, well, thank you guys for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Man. next time. Yep. Yeah, well, you yeah. have a fantastic day, man. And all of you that you are tuning too. in, thanks for joining us. We appreciate the the comments and the, the interaction today. It's been awesome. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. subscribe. So we are on YouTube. We're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. Rod nice. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. If you can't find us, you're not looking. Yeah, and, and we just <laughs> oh, want yeah, to be part of your sure. life. So. So, so give <laughs> us a right. call. Give us a, you know. have a good day. Yeah. All right, all right brothers. All right, take care. See you. Bye.